Welcome to this video where we talk about methodology sections in a research proposal and how to write them. This is part of our series on writing the research proposal. So readers of research proposals want a brief but thorough explanation of the methodology so that they can examine your capacity to conduct the research and the feasibility of the project. Now there are lots of different ways of doing research and depending on your field or discipline you might write the methodology section in a proposal quite differently but we're going to look at two quite common ways here um, and they follow qualitative and quantitative formats so the methodology sections for a qualitative research generally follow uh, an inverted paradigm format or structure where we go from the general to the specific, the broader paradigm, down to the specific details of this research project. So if we begin with the broader paradigm, you would describe this. And what I mean by a broader paradigm is, for example, this is uh, situated within a critical perspective or a feminist perspective or autoethnography. And you would explain why that paradigm is appropriate to this research. So qualitative design was chosen because this research is concerned with experiences. After the paradigm, you would unpack the research design. Um, and this is the methodology. So a method is very different from a methodology. Methods refer to the step-by-step -step process of collecting data. Methodology implies the philosophy behind the data collection. So for example, if we use narrative research as an example, we might collect people's stories through interviews. That would be the data. But the philosophy is that narratives can tell us about how people construct their lives. So there's a belief behind the data there. And that's what the philosophy is. So within the design, you would begin by identifying your unit of analysis. This is the thing that you'll be researching, the document, the students, um, the organization, the event, whatever it is, that is the focus of your research. That's what the unit of analysis is. You would also describe the data collection methods, um, whether these would be interviews, documents, observations. Usually in qualitative research, three sources of data are considered a measure of reliability, but they don't have to be very different sources of data. They can be all interviews, for example, but different kinds of interviews. Or if you were collecting narratives, you might ask participants to tell you their story in three different ways. To tell you their story in an interview, get them to write it, and then perhaps to draw it. And that would give you three very different sources of data. So you need to describe your chosen methods of data in relation to your project, that there's a rationale behind it. So a semi-structured interview format was chosen because, and you would explain that. And use sources so that you have evidence from the literature to support your justification of these methods. Because really what you're doing is providing an argument for these methods and not other methods. So within the research design, you would also describe the study site, which is the context of the research, where does this study take place and why was it chosen. You would also describe the sampling, so which participants have you chosen, why, how did you go about selecting them. And again, you need to justify it. So a non-random purposeful sample of students will be selected because... Explain how you will contact participants in a step-by-step -step way. So how will you contact them first and then what will you do?
if there are different constituencies in, within your research project or stakeholders, then explain why it's necessary to include each of those different stakeholders. What value will they bring to the project and how will you go about selecting a sample? And also within the research design, you want to have a step-by-step -step description of how the data will be collected. So what will you do first and then what will you do and what will you do after that? So you want to be specific, but, but quite brief. Um, and if you have a project that runs over a number of years or a project that divides into different phases, then this is where you would describe the different years or the different phases. So this is the very practical part of presenting the research methodology. After the research design, you would include a section on the data analysis strategy and here you would use sources to help convince your reader of your argument that you're making that this is the most useful data analysis strategy for this research. You would also include something on validity. In qualitative research this is often called trustworthiness. So how can you show that your data is trustworthy? So an example here might be member checking. So for example, if you interviewed participants, typed up the transcripts, took the transcripts back to your participants, they okayed them, that's called member checking. So that ensures that your data is valid. Now there are many other optional sections that you could include depending on your field or discipline, but these are just a few for you to consider. If you are doing research on, on human subjects, you would need to include something about ethics. If you're doing insider research, you might need to have a section on the role of the researcher and how you might affect the research. Limitations, significance, those kinds of things. Now let's move on to the methodology section for quantitative research. Quantitative research often uses deductive reasoning where the researcher forms a hypothesis first and then collects data to investigate the problem. So the research process would be to make observations, to establish what is known and compare them to the observations, to hypothesize, to make a prediction, to test the prediction, and then verify the findings and, if necessary, start the process again. So these are the sections you would write in the proposal. The research design, again here you would explain why you selected that particular design. So is it descriptive, correlation research, experimental, quasi-experimental? And a key part of quantitative research is explaining how you intend to control the variables. And you might explain whether this is an observational study or an intervention study. So again, use sources from texts to provide evidence for your argument here. You would also write about the study sites you would describe it, provide all the relevant information for your project site. You would explain the sampling, provide justification for the sampling. If there were measurement instruments, you would describe those and explain how they were valid and reliable.
you would provide a step-by-step -step description of the data collection and how the data will be um, collected, whether there would be a pilot study and how you would go about the practicalities of it. You might also include a section on data management and analysis and then there could also be optional sections, again, ethics, significance, limitations, etc. Methodology sections are very important in a proposal because this really is the meat of the proposal. Readers want to know that your data collection design is sound and that um, your evidence, because this is the evidence for the project that you will be collecting data on, that you have thought through the steps, that you can begin the research efficient, efficiently, and that the methodology will lead to meaningful results. Thank you for watching this video on writing the methodology section in a research proposal which is part of our series on writing the research proposal.